Now it's bigger. Um, we got rid of all the other stuff, so we can talk about me. Uh, <laughs> it's my Twitter handle. If you follow it, it's probably maybe going to tweet things during this talk. Um, also, my slides are up at this link. Um, I can keep saying that as we go. But getcleft.com slash anatomy. This talk's called Anatomy of a WordPress Hack, um, is why that's the link. But it's also like feels kind of edgy, right? Like I'm doing something a little crazy. Anatomy. Wow. Um, and there's, there's this hack. Um, if you are a Cardinals fan, uh, I'm really sorry. This talk is going to be unpleasant for you. Um, I'm demonstrating a bunch of security stuff, and all of my examples are on Cardinals sites. Um, we're just going to break everything I can do. Um, no real Cardner, Cardinals were injured in the making of this talk, but um, it's a matter of timing. So if you go that way, you can just leave. Like, no one likes you anyway. <laughs> I'm kidding, you're wonderful. You're all wonderful. I'm so glad you're here. Um, so the premise of my talk is that security is hard. Um, and not just hard, security is really, really hard. And this is a, a scary thing. Like, it's amazing that there are so many of you here, because security is something that when we talk about, everyone sort of like shuts down. It's like, oh, security, you have to be really smart, and you have to be sort of into security and know a ton. Um, but security is hard probably not for the reasons that you're thinking. Um, particularly, it's not hard because you have to be brilliant. <laughs> it's not hard um, because you have to have like, this extensive background knowledge. Um, security is hard because it's all about the details. Um, when we have a security flaw, it's not because someone was a huge idiot and doesn't know what they're talking about. It's usually because someone smart was doing something the way they normally do, but after doing it 100 times, they made a little mistake once. <laughs> And that little mistake ends up being something that somebody evil can do something with. So um, my whole talk here is uh, largely pointing out the fact that security is actually really interesting and really cool. And uh, I think more of our community can be involved in it and thinking about it. Um, and that the way we think about it has to change a little bit to where it's not like this like set of people in some off distant land who are uh, brilliant security experts, but they were all um, security experts, <laughs> and that we all need to be like, sort of considering these issues to keep ourselves safe. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through three hacks that broke WordPress. Um, these are the wrong order, so I'm going to go totally out of order from what's on this slide. Uh, but SQL injection, cross-site scripting, and click checking, which are scary names, but actually not very hard. Uh, and these were all in WordPress core, and I'm going to show how they were fixed. So. Um, we're going to take these Cardinal sites that are hosted on WordPress, break into them, show you how to mess them up, and then see how they were actually fixed. Just so we can talk about um, what kind of things cause these errors and how we fix them when they go wrong. Um, this talk is probably for you. Um, I like to say this because sometimes people are like, security, scary, I must be a developer, or you know, they're the tracks, like beginner developer, intermediate developer. But this is probably for you, especially if you like showed up and are sitting in this room already, despite using the word hack in the title. Um, also, it's a really good talk. <laughs> uh, there are going to be a couple lines of code. Um, you'll see like some of the slides, I'll say, like, here's a line of code, and I'll go through all the little pieces of what it's doing and what needed to change. Um, if that's not your thing, just like blaze over for a few minutes. I'll wake you back up when uh, we're done with it. But it's a pretty small portion of the talk overall. Uh, at this point, you may be wondering, like, hey, Brennan, you're about to show me a bunch of stuff that's already been fixed. Like, that's not very useful. Um, I would rather be seeing things that haven't been fixed, so we can work on that. Um, if you're saying that. Uh, I've got a couple of points. This one seems unrelated. Um, but almost 20% of the web runs on WordPress. That's a statistic Matt gave at WordCamp San Francisco. Uh, and it was pretty amazing. A huge chunk of the web is running on WordPress. Well, what that means is that there are a lot of attacks that happen on WordPress sites. Um, since so many of us are using it, if I can figure out a way to break into it, I can be really valuable. And so, they're going to keep happening. You know, I'm going to show you these three, and in the specific cases, they were fixed. But they're sort of... Uh, part of general problems, right? Like uh, cross-site scripting is one. Uh, the one that I'm going to talk about has been fixed. But cross-site scripting happens all the time. And it's happened in WordPress a bunch of times. It happens in plugins all the time. Uh, it happens across the web. So 
uh, even though these, the ones I'm showing you have been fixed, which is a good thing, because no one's going to attack you with them, so me talking about them isn't scary. Um, but we should know that these kinds of things keep happening. The last thing is that it's really fun and interesting. And like a lot of people don't get as psyched up about this stuff as I do, but like it's really cool to like see the ways that we can sort of break the systems we built. Like WordPress is so cool and so much fun. <laughs> oh, we're we're at twenty percent. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Nathan. Um, <laughs> that. That's great. Um, little input. No, it's cool. <laughs> This would have been his like fourth time seeing this talk, and every time I learn things, it's great. Mason has contributed a bunch to this talk. So, my name is Brennan, Brennan Byrne more specifically, but Brennan is good enough. It's my Twitter handle. It's, does anyone know if I'm tweeting? <laughs> I am? Yes! <laughs> Tried to set that up, wasn't sure. Um, and uh, I work uh, a company called Clef, getclef.com. We're building a replacement for usernames and passwords online. So I am thinking about, talking about, working on security all day, every day. This stuff is really my thing, and uh, I hope I can get you a little bit excited about it too. So let's get started. Anatomy of WordPress hack. Um, so I'm going to jump right into it and go with cross-site scripting. Um, cross-site scripting, despite kind of an ugly name, is when a hacker is able to run arbitrary code in every user's browser. So this is when like you've got a comment field and you expect people to write like, hey, I love your post, and instead they write like open bracket tag bunch of code and end of bracket tag, and you're like, that wasn't very nice, and then all of the users come to your page and instead of seeing a comment, they're running a bunch of code that you didn't want them to run. And that could be doing a bunch of evil stuff like making a botnet, or it could be doing embarrassing stuff like changing your website, and I'm gonna show you how to do the embarrassing stuff. Um, so let's go to a Cardinals blog. So um, just see this is localhost. Again, no actual Cardinals injured in the making of this talk. Um, but they've got a blog post, and they have made me an author. So I get to make a guest post on this blog, which is really cool, because I'm like maybe a fan or whatever. They don't know any better. Um, so this is my guest post from the view from a Red Sox fan. And you'll see that in my content, instead of writing anything actually useful or productive, I've written this like gallery ID tag, right? And the only thing you have to pay attention to in this is that I've got something in here called hack.js. And like there are very few like rules and security that you have to follow absolutely. But if you ever see something called hack.js, chances are it's bad for you. <laughs> um, so I'm going to just post this publish this post and check it out on their homepage. And we're going to see that <laughs> uh, we've just got this great sparkling banner declaring the uh, supremacy of the Red Sox. So um, this is clearly not what they wanted me to post on their page. I could do a lot of things. I could change their theme. I could have uh, messed with a bunch of stuff. I could have done something really evil that worked on other attacks. I just wanted to embarrass them, so that's what I did. Um, so that's cross-site scripting. Go back to talk. Um, and also, you'll notice that these are all Red Sox colors in here. I don't know how well they're reproducing, but they are. Um, so how did that happen? Um, this is a part of the thing that I was that was in my post, and it's a thing called uh, like the the problem are these things called icon tags, right? So got our HTML, and we've got this unsanitized user input, which is something I'm going to keep coming back to. Um, basically, when people send things to your site, you got to make sure they're what you expect them to be. right? Um, if I'm sending you a comment, you want to make sure it's a comment and not a bunch of code. Um, and so you sanitize it. You clean it up. You make sure that if it is code, you delete it. But if you don't sanitize it, it's unsanitized user input. And so this icon tag is unsanitized user input. And there's a bunch of other stuff. More unsanitized user input. And let me close the HTML tag. Um, unsanitized user input leads to the exploit. So what I did is I said that the icon tag was equal to my script, my JavaScript tag, which is hack.js, which again, universally, you can just delete everything called hack.js, and you'll be better off for it. Uh, except when you're making a presentation like this, in which case, I guess I should probably, damn. Um, Okay, so 
I create the script tag, and I'm loading an evil script. And because it wasn't sanitized, when that's rendered on the page, it's going to actually put into the page's HTML, like, hey, this icon tag is this script thing called hack.js. And I can run whatever I want. Um, evil cases, again, would be like more botnet-y kind of things, which I'll talk about later. But in my case, I just made that banner. It's a JavaScript banner that says Boston's Red Sox are way better. So um, this can result in a full site compromise. I can take over and do a lot of really evil things. And you really don't want to let it happen. So um, how did this happen? Like, what, what did someone mess up? Like, what idiot wrote code that let me do this? Right? So the um, truth is that there's this line where they had icon tag equals icon tag. Right? And if you look at it in the actual source, there are like eight of these. And all of them say tag escape, whatever the variable is, tag escape the variable. And for icon tag, they just forgot this. I get these two words which say sanitize it, right? clean up whatever they're putting in. And someone just forgot to type it the one time. And they typed it the five times before, but they forgot it once. And by leaving that those two words out, they left it open for a secure, security vulnerability. So in order to fix it, all you have to do, add back the tag escape. So um, super simple, like really it wasn't like a Bomar brain kind of thing. Uh, just it worked, and so no one noticed that there was a problem. But uh, an attacker could say, like, hey, somehow my code is getting through when it shouldn't be. And since we're open source, it's easy for them to look for those places where um, you missed one. So it removes the potentially malicious code. Yeah? So is that fixed on the WordPress end, or is that something personal? So this was fixed on the WordPress end. All of these are things that were uh, bugs in core that have been fixed. Um, and they've been fixed in various different versions. One of these is like a 2.2 bug. Um, the third one, the SQL injection one. Um, but it's illustrative of things that happen in plugins. So sometimes a plugin will do one of these things and they have to update it. But um, definitely not something that you're like responsible for in your site. But if you're building a theme or a plugin, it, they are things that you have to look out for. And also, when you see like a plugin that has like an update, it's like security updates. It's a lot of this stuff. Like, this is what they're doing. And it's good that they're doing it. And that's why, also, when a plugin hasn't been updated for like two years, you shouldn't install it. Because some of this stuff is getting uh, missed. Number two, click checking. Uh, click checking is actually a lot of like a really interesting one. Uh, and it is when a hacker tricks you into clicking something that you didn't want to click. So for instance, if you like a delete post, right? Like that's a button that you don't want to click a lot of times. Like usually you want your posts to stick around. And if I can trick you into clicking it uh, when you're, you think you're doing something different, I can do something sort of evil. So that's what we're going to do here. I'm going to go now to, oh, wow. It's still going. <laughs> that's great. Um, I'm now going to go to their um, scouting, uh, scouting page. They've got this post where they're, they've been like, scouting out the Red Sox, and they're talking about their strategy of how they're going to beat us. And this is their CRM, so this is where they keep this kind of information. But I've sent one of the scouts, or one of the people who use this, um, yeah, uh, an article. And this is a horribly styled article. Don't judge. Um, but basically, there's like a little piece of information, and then there's this read more link. So I'm going to click on that. But nothing happened. I like click. I don't know. It didn't read more. If I go back and I refresh this page, I've deleted the post. So I've actually just wiped this. So um, in this case, I deleted a post, which is like kind of a big deal. That's some information that they might not have saved somewhere else. Um, in some cases, you know, one of the biggest demos of this attack, someone actually installed a plugin that just took over your whole WordPress installation from the back end. Um, and so you can do pretty evil stuff by getting you to click on things that you don't see. And so I have couple of slides to sort of explain what happened here. Um, this is like your website on normal day. Uh, and there are these things called iframes. And for those of you who are technical, you'll know where an iframe is, but bear with us for a moment. Um, so this is your site with an iframe. And so this is like someone else's website. And it's just inside of yours. It's not like a separate window. It's not a separate tab. It's just in the middle of yours. But it's actually totally their site. And it looks like their site. Um, but it's just within a little embed link on your website. 
And so what an attacker does for clickjacking is that, so this green site is the article that I was reading with like the talking about the Red Sox winning and all of that, or the Cardinals gonna take the Red Sox. But the red is actually your website with the delete post, right? Like the wordpress.com slash WP admin uh, slash delete post, right? And there's this one button. And I've lined up the button to be right over that read more. So normally you would say like, oh, but I can see the delete button post, I would click that. But what I can also do is make this invisible. I can just turn the transparency to zero. And all of a sudden you're clicking on a button that's invisible to you and you know, could be on any site on the internet and you don't know it. Uh, you think you're about to click on this read more link. So I've, I've jacked your click, and I have successfully click jacked you. And deleted your post about the Red Sox. Oh, I have a great animation there. Did you see that? We can go back through that, because that was awesome. Oh. <laughs> so I've made it invisible. I forgot I did that. That was really cool. Do you understand it better now? <laughs> um, does everyone get this? Because this is like the like hardest one, yeah. I just don't know why you introduced the reference to the iframe in this context when you were regarding an invisible overlay to it. Uh, right, so the iframe is actually the separate site, right? So this is like a <laughs> website for like your news article, yeah. right? And this iframe is holding like a WordPress site. Yeah, and that's part of your, right, that's exactly. part of your design, okay. And that's, well, not as part of your design. This is a malicious site. You're on an attacker's site. Right? Oh, okay. I understand that I started by saying this was your site and then your iframe. That's how you would normally use iframes. But in this case, they built a site that's like looks like it's good stuff in green, and the red stuff's invisible and is actually directing you somewhere you don't want to go. Um, and then they've made it invisible to boot. So, yeah? Why can't they just encode a hyperlink that is to the delete button? Why do they need an iframe? So the delete button isn't like accessible via just a normal URL, right? Uh, it's something that you have to do sort of do a post, and there's uh, things called CSERF tokens, which keep uh, a link from being activated the wrong from a different website, so that I can't activate a button just randomly. Um, and that means that basically I have to actually click the button for it to work. Uh, and I actually used to have a CSERF attack in here, but um, it was like the least clear of them, so I did click checking because I like it better anyway. <laughs> but the idea is that the button actually has to be clicked, and so they put the button here and then hide it. One more question. Yep. When you delete the post, is it actually gone or does it go in the trash? So it goes in the trash in this case. But again, I was deleting this sort of like Red Sox content. Um, it can actually do things that are a lot easier. So it can sort of take over the whole site um, by installing the evil plugin or something like that. No problem. Is that one more question? Yeah. So when they to your site, then there's code on the page that they go to that creates that function of deleting the Well, so post. what you can imagine is that you know you would normally see a, your WordPress admin page that says delete, like has a delete post button, yeah. right? That's what's in the red box. They have actually put a link to that, right? Okay. Like an ad, just your admin page with, a, with the delete box. And then they've lined the delete box up right where they want you to click, and they made it invisible. So it's just like you're clicking the box on your own web page, you're just doing it on accident. So the idea is just to trick you into clicking a button you didn't mean to. And um, that can do things that are pretty benign, but it can also do things that are pretty evil. So now, oh, great animation. <laughs> um, just to go a little bit into the code that's making that happen, here's our iframe, right? This is how I put an iframe on a page. And there are two important parts of this. Uh, well, you can see I'm using your, embedding your admin page, but I set the opacity to zero, so I made it completely transparent, you can't see it at all, and I have set the Z index to 100, which actually means that uh, it'll be above everything else in the page. So even though it's invisible, it's in front, and so when you click in that spot, you're clicking on my iframe instead of anything else. And I delete the post. Um, like I said, uh, if, if someone was to allow the embedding of like valuable pages like the delete post was in this case, um, that can actually have some pretty serious ramifications. The way we fix it, so how about is it full site compromise? It's really bad, it's really bad. <laughs> but again, we have a one line fix, but I'm gonna talk about this one a little more. So what I'm adding is this thing called X frame options same origin. 
And this is generally how people keep from click checking. This is why you're not just randomly clicking on things all the time that are like transferring money and uh, deleting your posts and all sorts of evil stuff. Because um, extreme options basically means like don't let my website be in an iframe. Only let my website be shown in like a normal browser setting. And that's something that WordPress has added in a bunch of cases. That's something that your bank has certainly. Um, it's something that's all over the web. Is this X frame options same origin? Make sure this isn't coming from a different website. Um, the only challenge for X frame options is that Internet Explorer 6 and 7 don't recognize them. They just pretend like they're not there. And Microsoft had just added this new iframe that were invisible thing in uh, Internet Explorer 6. So that's one of the reasons why we always say, like, Internet Explorer 6 is such a bad security thing. Like, yeah, there are a lot of little bugs, and yeah, there are like vulnerabilities that are worrisome, but the big thing is this. Like, this is what we're all talking about. Every time someone tells you you have to upgrade, this is like the main thing we're worried about from a security perspective, is that all of the clickjacking stuff is totally possible. Whereas in the modern web, we've actually mitigated it mostly. Oh, so add header to the requests. And tell the browser to only allow the iframe embed when it's on the same domain. So I could do an iframe on my own website right, of my own content, but I, no one else is allowed to use it. All right, number three, SQL injection. And you should say it's SQL injection. I know how much SQL y'all are doing, but if you say SQL injection, people are going to make fun of you. <laughs> you say it right. <laughs> I mean, you. You can say SQL injection, and I'm not going to make fun of you, but I would be irresponsible if I didn't tell you how to say it right. Uh, it's also CSRF, we talked about before, it's CSRF, and it's like, that one you'll get away with. No one will make fun of you for saying it wrong, but if you say CSRF, you're like super cool. It's like, oh, you're in, you get it, security. It's a very in crowd. We care a lot about how you pronounce it. <laughs> um, so SQL injection, when bad people access your database in bad ways. And this is probably the most likely one you've heard about of these three, like cross-site scripting, maybe click jacking, probably. SQL injection is like the one people talk about a lot. I don't know, maybe not. Maybe you've heard of all of them. They all are pretty cool, so uh, it's hard to know. Um, so when people access your database in bad ways, this is basically like your database is supposed to be this thing that you have and that you only give people certain pieces of. So they're like, I want to see your post. And you're like, yeah, that's in my database. I'll give you a post. But in SQL injection, you're like, here's my database. And they're like, I want all your passwords. And you're like, no. And then they just take it anyway. So um, what we're going to do is deface a website a little more seriously. Because like these first two have been pretty fun. But like, let's get serious. We want into their home page. Right? This is just like the Cardinals page. Why the Cardinals are the best? Great. I wrote great content here. Um, and so what I've done is I wrote a file called hack.php. And similar to hack.js, hack.php is never good news. And so when I run it, oh my God, I'm going to give a second, and I've hacked all the users. And they only have two accounts, admin and test. And I'm just going to warn you that test's password is password, but it has no privileges, so it's useless to me. But it's admin. Admin had a much better password, and it's hashed here. Um, but we'll get to... So I, I've stolen the passwords out of the database. This is the whole password table, everything they had stored. It's mine now. Now, this doesn't look like your password, I hope. If you have passwords like this, great work. <laughs> you are a robot. Please report to whatever it is that's controlling you, because that's not real. Um, <laughs> no one has passwords like this. So why is this what's stored? Um, so the reason we store things like this is that we have uh, a really hard time remembering. But um, if we send our passwords around in plain text all the time, then it's going to be pretty easy for someone to grab them. Or when an attacker like me gets into the database, they'd just be like, cats are great, ha, and then your account. So we've done this thing called hashing, which is I put it into this function, and it goes through these crazy mathematical things that are really hard, and then it comes out looking like this. And you can never take this and turn it back into my password. Right? It only goes one way. And that means every time you give me your password, I can always run it through the function, and I'll always get the same crazy string, and I can store this, and that way I don't actually have to store your password. I store something that's really different and really hard to get back to your password with, but um, you still get to use your normal password that you always use. Now the challenge, and what I'm about to show you, 
is that I can just run a lot of passwords and see which ones end up looking like this. Right? So I can never take this and turn it back into your password, but I can just try a lot of times and see when I get something like this. So I'm actually really quickly going to uh, this didn't even, I also just saved these passwords to a file called passwords.txt. It used to be on this slide, but I moved that. Um, so, all right. Um, I'm going to use something called John the Ripper, which is the sort of most popular password cracker. And what it's going to do is it's going to take uh, a, it's best guess at like normal passwords, and it's going to run it through, and it's going to see if it can guess the ones that were stored there. Run that. Oh no. Maybe I'm not going to run it. I would be super bummed if that didn't. Nope, that's not the right one. I'm only going to try this for one second, and if it doesn't work, we're just going to um, do something else. for being good sports about it. Wait, it already exists. Are you kidding me? Where does that already exist? <laughs> good point. You make a compelling case. I realize now why this isn't working. No, we got it. Cool. I'm sorry about that. That should have been way smoother. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this thing, and it's going to take a minute. So just running through all the different guesses. And I know this is like gibberish, especially because I zoomed in really hard. And it's going to break everything in half. But I used this thing called MV5, which is the most basic hashing algorithm anyone used. Did I get them? All oh, right, there we go. So like I said, test used the password and password. And then oh, used red socks suck one. Wow. Harsh. But now we know their passwords. So we're going to go log in as them. Uh, admin red socks suck one. Oh yeah. And just really quickly, because I don't want it, I'm going to change. Does anyone see cardinal.jpg here? There we go. <laughs> I'm so glad I have your help. <laughs> we're going to update that file. And we're going to go back to the site. Oh, maybe. Oh, that's. If this doesn't work, I'm also going to. I just messed this one up. <laughs> Do I have a bracket? What? Let's see. I, for some reason, I'm not where I'm supposed to be. Game editor. Oh, that's why. Style sheet. This is where I want to be. There we go. This is much better. Update that file. Now we'll go view the site, and it's still not fixed. There it is. There we go. All right, cool. So we've taken over their site. Now, <laughs> perfect. So all I did was change the header, but as you saw, I just totally took all their passwords. And <laughs> um, this is the oldest hack. This was in 2.2 that I was able to do a SQL injection. Um, turns out that we actually do querying in a whole different way in databases in modern WordPress. So this happens like very, very rarely. Yes. Um, but I can show you what happened and sort of the ideas behind SQL injection because it's still valuable in a lot of different places and kind of cool. So. Um, First is like, how does this happen? So um, this is the, the query that I'm abusing. And what happened was there was a function where I could be like, hey, I want to see themes that are similar, or uh, categories that are similar. Right? So you've got posts that are about books, and you've categorized them in like fiction, nonfiction, sci-fi, fantasy. And when I put in sci-fi, I want to get out fantasy and fiction. Right? Um, so I'm just looking for like similar categories. 
like a like very niche little function that we're using, but that's the one that they messed up on, so that's the one I have to talk to you about. Um, but at the end of it, I also got to say how many similar categories I wanted, right? So it could be one, two, three, or four. And that's this thing called limit args for. So what I'm gonna ask the database for is like, give me a bunch of these queries and then limit the number of them to however many I decide here, right? This args for is how, what, my, what I decided. And they didn't worry about this too much because it was a little drop down, right? I could only pick one, two, three, or four. I couldn't type anything there. But it turns out, like you were talking about earlier, guy on your laptop, that's cool. Fine. <laughs> I like you anyway. Uh, um, so it turns out that you could actually just submit the stuff with something random in that uh, thing instead of whatever number they were expecting. Um, so select the categories from the database. I only want to get however many of them are. But this was unsanitized, like we talked about before. Do y'all remember? It's full circle here. This is great. Um, so this is going to be an exploit. So I'm going to set my args to something that looks like this. They were expecting it to be just a number, and I set it to this instead. Um, so first thing I did is I said, I only want one result. I want one similar category. And then I said, and I want you to get rid of one result. <laughs> so I want one category, and then I want you to throw it away. But then, I also want all of your usernames and passwords <laughs> from an entirely different table. So you can see that I, I went from like, yeah, I don't want anything to I want everything. Um, I've gone to a totally different table and I've just stolen all of the important credentials. Um, and the reason I was able to do that is again because of that unsanitized user input. And this all gets put in where that one should have been. And so it's going to query like, hey, I'm happy little database query, and I want uh, a category, and then I want you to get rid of it, and I want all the usernames and passwords, and then we're just going to send that to Brennan, and he's going to do nice things with them. Um, and so this is how you embed the second query, um, which is stealing usernames and passwords. This one is a five-character fix. We don't even need a whole line to fix this one. All we have to do, and all that we did this time, was make sure that it was an integer. Right? Let's make sure it's a number. <laughs> Clearly, we don't want a big line of thing, like a text full of stealing our stuff code. We just want a number. So um, in 2.2.1, we added these five characters and we fixed it completely. Now, uh, we do queries actually very differently uh, in WordPress now. Instead of doing sort of these like direct long <laughs> things that people tend to make mistakes around, we have this whole querying uh, idea that uh, doesn't like cross database tables. Right? So basically, you would never ask for categories and also get usernames and passwords. Now we're like, if you're looking at categories, you're just going to get categories, right? And if you're asking for passwords, we're going to make really sure you want them. So um, the whole way of doing this is a lot better now. Um, so we see it a lot less frequently. Um, but still super interesting um, to be able to get everyone's passwords. <laughs> and we're just sanitizing that user input. So how bad is this? The full site compromise. And this one, we're going to go so far as to say, is a home run. <laughs> you literally have your passwords, I'm logged in as your admin, like, I'm you, I have total control. And this is just going to loop, it's great. <laughs> it's a home run. Um, so, how does it happen? Security's in the details. You know, how, how do we make these mistakes? All of them are tiny. You know, each of these three things were these little errors that somebody made probably because they were coding up late at night <laughs> and they did the right thing a hundred times and then the hundred and first they messed it up. Um, and that is really hard and that can make security seem like really scary and really intimidating. But the truth is it's also really like leveling, right? Like we're all likely to make the same mistakes. No matter who it is writing the code, this stuff happens. And we all um, are responsible for both knowing that we're capable of it and looking for ways to do better. So there are three things we can do to make security better. Um, the first thing is to start by knowing that we can't know everything. Like, starting at the beginning of your level and all the way up to the most advanced person in the world, no one knows everything about security. It's constantly evolving, it's constantly changing. There's a lot uh, for us to know. So the first thing, we're always learning more. Y'all are here, which is fantastic. Thank you so much for being here. You're awesome. Give yourselves a hand for showing up to a security talk. That's great. Um, so the first thing we can do is education. Um, we need to constantly be trying to learn more. We need to be engaging with the new material. So as people keep talking about this stuff, we should keep listening. 
Uh, the second thing is that we're always going to make mistakes. Like I said, no matter who you are, if you're <laughs> writing code at 2 in the morning, the chance of you remembering that little int tag goes down pretty dramatically. And you end up being responsible for one of these bugs. So um, when we make mistakes, the important thing is to learn from them. Right? So to make talks about other people's previous mistakes and come to WordCamps and talk about them <laughs> um, is a, a big part of that. So the second thing is that experience. That as we make mistakes, we have to be retrospective about them. We have to think about what we did wrong and how we can keep doing better. The third thing uh, is knowing that you can't write secure code, uh, I can't write secure code, but we can write secure code. Um, WordPress is an incredibly secure platform. We have built a piece of software that serves you know, <laughs> billions of page views, millions of people a day, and uh, it's actually incredibly uh, tight. There are so few vulnerabilities. And when things like these happen, they're caught really quickly, and they um, we improve constantly. So um, the third important thing about security is the community. And that's our biggest advantage is WordPress versus other software, is that we have a lot of people who are all looking at the same code. When someone makes a mistake, there's someone else to catch them. Um, but that's something we also have to internalize. So if you're writing a theme or you're writing a plugin, it's important to have someone else look at it before you publish it, um, because they're going to notice things that you didn't. And they're sometimes little things like, hey, you have a typo. And sometimes they're like, hey, you have a typo that results in a horrible security vulnerability. Um, and you want to catch those as soon as you can. Um, so a couple of closing thoughts. Uh, first, again, thank you all for being here. Um, it's like one thing for me to be really into this topic and always want to talk about it. It's another thing to have like you all stuck in chairs having to listen to me. <laughs> um, it's really awesome that you're engaging. I, uh, I'm really glad that you showed up. So thank you for being here. Um, also, some thanks to like the people who helped figure out these attacks. Uh, Cross-site scripting was fixed by John Cave. The click shagging was reported by Andrew Horton. SQL injection by Alexander Concha. Um, WordPress security team in general is amazing. We have really smart people looking for this stuff all the time and catching it and researching it, and they're really, really smart. Uh, and oops, slide with my C surf in uh, The WordPress community in general uh, is, of course, invaluable to catch it. Um, quick points. Uh, what if you find a security issue? A couple of do's and don'ts. Do verify it's a real issue, test it out one or two times, and make sure that it's actually a real thing. Then email security at wordpress.org. They'll sort of take over from there. Bonus points feel like keep engaged with them because they'll teach you a ton and they can actually learn a lot from you. Like uh, for them to see like how you arrived at the bug and why it's something they missed is actually super valuable for both of you. So if you have a little time, super worth it. Don't maliciously exploit other WordPress sites. I think that should go without saying, but I say it anyway because don't. Um, <laughs> the it's really no fun when people are breaking into other people's WordPress sites for real. Uh, it's way more fun when we do it just for pretend. Um, the other thing is, oh, did I do this? Uh, <laughs> I'll just get it. Go to the left. It's great. Um, don't publish uh, details of vulnerability before it's been fixed. So I said one of the things is that we have to share our experiences. But sometimes people get really like overzealous about their experience. They're like, hey, look, I found a bug. It's like we haven't fixed that yet. Stop. Just don't talk about it. Um, and then you know attackers get access to it before we're ready for it, and you know it ends up doing terrible things. Uh, even though we already know it's there, we just haven't fixed it. Yet. So when you find something, report it, and then don't talk about it until it's been fixed. Once it's been fixed, talk about it all you want, and we can talk about how we fixed it, and we'll all learn from it. But wait, just that like little important amount of time. Uh, the other thing is that the most the best you, thing you can do for your security today is upgrade to 3.7. It's a new version of WordPress, it's out this week, and it has a bunch of awesome security stuff that's going to make you way safer. So do it. Like, now. Like, please. Uh, all of us who are interested in WordPress security are just dying for everyone to be on 3.7. Because every one of these apps still has people who are installed on 2.2. Like, I know what can happen to 2.2. You shouldn't be on it anymore. And 3.7 just adds a bunch of stuff that we all really want to see. Um, Particularly background updating, which lets us fix security things without you having to worry about it. Uh, that's what I have. Anyone who has questions, I'm happy to talk about it. This is a really nerdy joke. If you don't get it, don't worry about it. I just want questions. Uh, cool. Yeah? Um, you, you gave examples. I'm not going to bother with the mic. 
gave examples of uh, these attacks. Right. Were the, and these were from, I guess, the 2.2. So these were exploit vulnerabilities. I'm just clarifying yeah. for the non. Right, yeah. These were exploit vulnerabilities from the 2.2 install. So there are actually three different installations. Most security bugs aren't something that go like way back. There's something that someone added on accident for a release, and then it gets fixed the next one because you know there's a new piece of code that changed something. Um, so each of these is a different version. It's 3.1.3, 2.2, and 3.5. Okay. Different? So from the uh, from the from the implementation side, yep. were they um, basically pieces of code that were written as a custom theme at the time? These are all in core. In? All of these were in core. Okay. These are portable really. Okay. Thank you. Hello. Oh, I have a microphone that works now. I'll repeat questions. It'll be on the camera as well. There is, and uh, the severity varies. So uh, themes have, are less likely to cause problems than plugins. Plugins are less likely to cause problems than four, but. Anytime you write code that's getting executed on WordPress, there's the potential to do that. But themes can do pretty much anything. Um, so themes can go wild. And if they're taking a lot of permission, that means they can do a lot of damage. But um, generally, the things to worry most about are core code, then plugin code, then theme code. And on a say most of what I do is child themes. So is that also less? Again, child themes. So the question was, are child themes as dangerous as parent themes. Child themes tend to do less, especially because you're editing less code. Uh, tends to be that you're doing more visual stuff. Changing visual things rarely um, adds security vulnerabilities. Um, in general, it's always good to have someone looking over it, just uh, in case, uh, anytime. Um, also, just good for your like, code quality or whatever you're doing. Um, but definitely, the, the further down you're going, the less risk there is. Yeah? I would just also note on child themes, You'll get security updates for your child team right. when they update the parent team. So, much better result. Absolutely. Great, great point. So, you, um, you, really, didn't the, you really didn't hack into the website? Which website? Uh, the one that you were just talking about. Which one? Oh, website. Which website? The, the no, no, these were just like locally installed things. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do anything actually evil. Oh. I don't want to no, get so arrested. I'm so disappointed. I knew he did. <laughs> uh, no, th these are all just like. No, I was just kidding. Oh, okay. Good. Okay. Good. No, no so Cardinals actually aren't making this presentation. Yep. So the SQL injection, you had to execute a file called hacked.php, right. which was on that website server. No, so ha that's a little bit confusing because it's on localhost and everything is on localhost here. I just ran that. I could have run that file from anywhere. If they had hosted it on their server and I ran that hack.php file, it would have worked from anywhere. Well, what I'm wondering is, like, I, my site got hacked and I found a file called bootstrap.php. I'm wondering, how did it get there? Yeah, I, I so get there. there are a couple of different ways they get there. Um, people getting access to FTP, um, things like clickjacking, where they need to install something you didn't mean to. Um, and I can like, talk to you more about that afterwards. But uh, likely, that was the problem. Right? Like somebody got a file installed on your server, and it gets access to your config files, so they get access to the database and stuff like that. Um, but in general, this attack actually didn't require anything on the database, or anything on the server. It just was uh, a form that wasn't checking what I was putting into the form, so I put evil stuff into the form and hit submit, and it did all the evil for me. So, yeah, this is actually, like, SQL injection is actually really interesting because, like, all I'm doing is typing into your forms, but you're not ready for what I'm typing. No problem. Yeah. So if you have a, if you have um, a site which was hacked, what's the recommended way to find, you know, where to where to look for it, where where to find the? Yeah. So once a site's been hacked, <coughs> the first thing you want to do is change passwords uh, for every user, uh, just like clean everything password wise, and then use something like uh, WP Fence or uh, there's a couple of plugins. Uh, Security is a great one that'll sort of do a clean for you and it'll just run through and like make sure there are no weird files and things like that. And then you want to go back and change all your passwords again. So that's like an important thing. Like people are always like, change your passwords. But you actually have to change them, clean everything, then change them again. Because probably there's still something there monitoring them when you change them. So people see a lot of repeat hacks. Can we look for, search for security plugins to, to find these? 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Is that so the best way to do that? Definitely. And security is great, and WP Fence has a lot of features. I don't tend to use them because I don't like this plugin and have everything, but WP Fence or Word Fence? Word Fence, I'm sorry, you're right. Thanks for that correction. Yep. Yeah, so HD access is something that people ask me about a lot, and I should probably talk more about it in my presentation. But my general recommendation is that you shouldn't use HD access unless you have to. Um, that mostly, like, you're likely to open doors that you don't mean to uh, and forget to close them, just because it's, like, really complicated and messy. Like, I hate messing with those files just because they're, like, annoying. Um, if you need them for something, you totally can use them, and they're, like, generally a good way to, like, control access to certain pages. But there are plugins that do a better job that are a lot easier to manage. So I would just like the, the problem with HD access is just that it's difficult, and so you're likely to make a mistake. They are not themselves a problem. Yep. Um, I actually have two questions. Great. Two So the question was, her host adds uh, random strings to end of table names when you set her database names when you set them up uh, WordPress. Is that a good thing? Uh, it's definitely good. Uh, some of the like biggest simple things you can do are like not having an admin called admin. You use a password kind of thing for your admin name. You're going to be safer there. Making WordPress uh, table names harder to guess is a lot better. If you use WP underscore passwords, it's like. I'm going to know how to get your passwords if I can find a SQL injection. Now, it turns out I'm probably not going to be able to find one, so you're probably safe. But the harder you make it, the, the better. Uh, that's, it sort of ends up being like a balancing act of like how much do you want to have to manage that uh, complexity versus how safe you need. Um, so if you're like running government NSA steal, <coughs> find people, like you probably want to have crazy database names. And you want your admin to change everything. But if you're like, doing a blog that gets a thousand hits a day, it's like, you probably don't even want to do too many. Second question. Part two is kind of what you just said. Was like, what are the simple things you can do to put the ad with it or like some of the best to the maximum level? Yeah, so um, the, the best things you can do are change the admin. Uh, so best simple things you can do to increase your security. Change the admin. Um, don't. Uh, give access where you don't have to. So when there's a new user, don't make them admin unless like, they absolutely need admin services. Um, and if you have clients that don't want to use much of the backend, if you can hide some of that stuff, it's awesome. Um, so the more like, permission you can take away from people, the better. And like that seems like kind of evil, like, hey, don't give people permission to do the stuff they want. But, like, they're just going to hurt themselves. Don't give them scissors when they're running. Yep. Uh, is it common that people hire hackers to hack a website? Mostly no. Most hacks are somebody figures out like, oh, there's this little way where I can exploit 1% of sites. So I'm going to set a robot to just go try it on every website, and the 1% will fall to me, and I'm going to take them over. But is it happened because I have a website, and it was basically domain redirected to another website that does the same thing. So it completely looked like you know they, they just want to get more time. And we were just thinking about, okay, he knows who owns this other domain. Can we go after this person? So, yeah, that's really hard. So the, a domain was redirected to a competitor, which seems pretty fishy. And depending on you know their sort of motivation there, it's totally possible. But uh, definitely hard to like do pursue legal action because there's like without like a digital forensics team, which like you have to be pretty high profile for anyone to use that kind of stuff. With. Um, or those kind of resources to like protect you. Um, I would say it's pretty hard. Mostly you just want to try to recover it and move on. Um, and, you know, try to be a little bit stronger next time because it's really hard to... People who are good at hacking are hard to follow and the people who hire people who are good at hacking are even harder. Yeah, but they can just say like, oh, that, I didn't do that. It just 
happened, and you know, it's hard to prove it. So um, it's generally a hard 